Good evening, folks of YouTube. Love you all. How are you doing? We are progressing through the week at a pace. We are now Wednesday, of course, which means things are going pretty well for you, I hope. So, first of all, before we get into the current hobby nightmares and good stories as well, we need to go on and have a little love with composite games who are in the description down below. You get 5% off by using the promo code Northern Exile down below to get your extra hobby bits to go in towards the summer tournaments and things like that. They want to give you 20% off, so 25% off if you use the promo code Northern Exile down below. Once again, for US people, I am currently working on something. I should have some news by the weekend on the sponsorship where you can get a similar deal in the US. I'm doing my best, guys. I'm working for you as much as I can. Um, hopefully, I'll get some news on that this weekend. But anyway, let's get on with some of our hobby nightmares shall we so it's been an interesting one i've been getting a few really cool interesting stories over the past couple of days one of which is a DD &D story at the end of this session which is going to be really really cool to go over i'm sort of saving the doozies for the end but each and every single one of these today is pretty good i think anyway and of course we are following a theme and today's theme is politics Yay! Um, but we also have a Bolt story, which isn't about politics, it's just about GW, which is which is like a, a palate cleanser, if you will. But anyway, let's get into this. So Gravy Grave is back, and he is giving us another story of his time in the hobby. Gravy Grave says, Hello again. Well, I decided to share a horror story from my time as a Games Workshop store manager. Let's call this story number one. I was over the moon getting the job after, after a redundancy and unemployment, but in the end, I wish I'd never worked for the company. I got to visit the shop, of course, I've shopped there prior to being a manager, and they gave me the job, and I decided, I decided to, after, the, after they gave me the job, and I decided to go and introduce myself, although I or, or actually started to work there officially a week later. Just a break from the story, I did that as well. Uh, when I became store manager, I walked into to my new store, and essentially introduced myself and made sure that I knew what people wanted from what was going on. Anyway. The shop had two full-timers and one part-timer. So two full-time staff and one part-time staff. That must have been a big store then. I chatted with the lads for some time and found out they were really nice dudes and knew their stuff. And as I observed them with the customers, I thought this is going to work out very well. The shop was a bit dirty and that was my only gripe and decided to make that one of my key points making the story the store more more successful the work starts and the douchebaggish trainer arrives with his nose up and his attitude made me feel like he thought he was from royal blood or something i i, I, I eagerly explain that my vision is to clean up the store and make it function better and much more cleaner he kind of knocks it off like okay yeah and immediately tells me that my first job is to fire one of the two employees. I was flabbergasted. I told him that I need a week to evaluate their work, at least. In the end, they were both equally good workers, and I had a tough decision ahead. A young guy in his 20s, or, or a lad my age, way older, with a pregnant wife. If you're even a tad righteous person, you know the decision I made. Yeah, yeah, I know, man. Yeah. I'm guessing you sacked the guy who's in his 20s. Unfortunately. Not saying it's a should thing you should do, but it is what it is. He says, I kept the older bloke, and the younger one still got some part-time work, and he definitely understood my decision. As I said, these guys were awesome, but little did I know, with this decision, I'd started to dig my own grave. The trainer had an issue with the older chap, and in his eyes, I was now in at, at, at odds with him too. I didn't realise that until later, but that's another story. Fuck me, man. Yeah, you need you need to give me part two of this. You definitely need to give me part two of this. This sounds... <sighs> I'm kind of glad I didn't have to, to sack anybody because I was a one-man store. I didn't have to do anything like that. Um, I will say that my, the manager I had when I was working as a staff member, he, he was gleeful in the fact that he got to extend my probation and things like that when he didn't think I was doing good enough. He did it to my, to my co-worker as well. Um... Even though we were hitting all of our KPIs and we were generally nice guys and the store people liked us and we were making money. He just wasn't very happy with the way that we were working. So, you know, 
Um, we, we both passed our probation, by the way. And he was good enough to say, you guys have made real improvements after a few weeks. I was like, okay, we haven't really changed anything, but there we go. So I think sometimes um, guys expect you to, to find some sort of perverse glee in sacking people, which is not something that normal people do. Do you know what I mean? Normal people don't find that they're having a really good time when they sack somebody. It just seems to get these people's jimmies off, you know what I mean? They seem to really get off on the fact that they can play with people's lives, which, you know, isn't great. But hey, your ma your trainer sounds a lot like mine. But mine came in under the radar. So my trainer was a really nice guy when I first met him. And he even called me when I was... I, I had a bit of time off before I started my, uh, manager, my, my, my manager job. So what I wanted to do is I needed to fix my PC at the time because it was broken. So I came home to Liverpool when I, I'd finished my time as a, as a staff member and was waiting to start my, my manager's job, basically. And I got my PC fixed and then brought it back to, to where I was going to work with me, you know. And whilst I was away for that week, I had um, a call from him several times, you know, just saying, hey, man, can't wait to work with you. We need to go for a few pints. It's just how I work. And I was like, oh, brilliant. I love drinking. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, yeah, me too. So we'll definitely go for a few pints and all that. Um, but as you can tell from the other stories, he, he completely went off the rails later on and wasn't very nice with me or my customers. Uh, tended to find find excuses to find fault with me rather than actually, you know, have a fault. He, he would try and invent one. Um, his method of training was very patronizing and treated me like I was basically five years old, which I didn't appreciate. But I got, again, even then, the reason why I got so pissed off with it is because I was acting like that wasn't bothering me. You know, I, I three bags full, sir. Yes. Turned up early, made sure he knew, you know, made sure I threw myself into all of his training. And, you know, it, it nothing was ever good enough for them. And I, I'm very sorry that you've had that experience. Now, I tend to think people think it's one or the other. People think you're either you're either having a good time at games workshop because you fit their mold or you're not because you're a normal guy i saw normal guys at games workshop who had a really good time and some of them are still there now mainly because it, it's it's pot luck you know they, they've had a trainer who's decent um they've had a store which in which nothing is expected of it so they just turn up and, and get on with it basically day by day um and that's just what they do they, they just they just enjoy the job um, they keep their head down. They they don't they don't say anything when they're doing training. They just go there and and schmooze and 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 kiss the right butt. They hate doing it, but they they do it. They, they don't enjoy doing it like some people. They actually do it just to keep their jobs. And then they get on with it, you know. But the normal guys. Um, and then there's there's normal other normal people like myself, like you sounds like who are just tagged from the moment they walk in the door as the fly in the ointment, and that's it. It's a very cliquey attitude. Um, they don't want to... As soon as they, they've made up their mind about you, they will make up their mind about you in like three minutes. And as soon as they've made up their mind about you, that's it. You, you can do nothing to win them over from that point. You may as well just walk out. Or stay there for as long as you can, get as much money from, the, from them as you can, then leave. You know, but it is what it is, man. I'm really sorry you had to go through that, but, you know. Moving on. <clears throat> oh, by the way, give me the second part of that story. That's going to sound really interesting. So, Terry T is next. Hi, Northern. This is a, sh a story for Hobby Nightmares that dates back to 2013 in a store in Kent. Ooh, very posh. I am not going to be too specific as I don't want the customer's uh, identity to be compromised. I couldn't care less about the manager as he was so wrong in this case, in my opinion, that I really don't care. Roy was a customer of Games Workshop for about 10 years, playing both Warhammer Fantasy and other games like Blood Bowl and The Hobbit, etc. Etc. Sorry. He would always come in on a Sunday with his two sons and game in store. Back in the day when this was actually allowed. Yeah, I know. It's bullshit, isn't it? He was a good customer and would always make a purchase for his army or for, for, or for that of his sons, one of his sons. He would attend all tournaments, painting competitions, games days, and he even drove a minibus of customers to Warhammer World for a day out. Wow, sounds like a right legend, this guy. He would even help staff by, su by supporting intro games, etc. Not strictly allowed, 
but such was the relationship Roy had. Wow. This guy sounds like an absolute diamond, mate. You could build a... It's kind of like having a football team when you say you can build a team around this guy. Yeah, you could build a store around a customer like this. You could really build an entire store around him and just, like, you know, have him be the linchpin there. Anyway... He was, by all intents and purposes, a model customer for Games Workshop. This soured, though, when it emerged he was standing to be elected to the, to the local council. Sounds like the kind of guy who would be, yeah. He never mentioned this in the store. He never talked about any, any politics in the store. The way it came out was when another customer, Damien, bought, brought in an excerpt from a, lo a local paper covering the local voting and candidates who were standing. On the paper was Roy's name and his party affiliation. UKIP. <clears throat> okay, so for those of you who don't know, UKIP was generally a party for people who weren't satisfied with the with the um, Conservative Party. It was a centre-right party, essentially for the old-timers, <laughs> you know, uh, for, for <clears throat> but it had a, it had a reputation for being for the, you know, the Little England mentality, because it, stand, it, the, it stands for United Kingdom Independence Party. You know, they wanted the UK to be on their own, to, to, to have, you know, and all of, most of their, most of their policies were more conservative, you know, um, and they were mainly formed out of um, older people, to say the least, you know. Um, the, don't get me wrong, there were people who were younger. Um, I think um, Count Dankula was actually with UKIP for a while, before he went independent. But anyway, um, so yeah, there were younger people in there who thought that UKIP had the best interest of the UK at heart. Um, I agreed with some of their policies, but most of them I was like, meh, or I didn't agree with. So I didn't go with UKIP and I've never been voting. Uh, but I don't, if you have gone with UKIP, you, you, you're not, you're not far right. You're not, you know, you, you are centre really, but more right leaning. And definitely more um, independent. Um, when, you know, when people say like um, conservatives are basically, people in the UK say conservatives are basically, because they don't know any better. They say conservatives are basically the Republicans and Labour are basically the, de the Democrats. When you look at the US, that's bullshit. It doesn't doesn't translate at all. Um, there are parts of the Republicans that are like the Conservatives, and there are parts of the Republicans that are like Labour. There are parts of the Democrats that are like Conservative, and there are parts of the Dem of the Democrats that are like Labour. There is no, it is it is a completely different country over there, and I wish people would stop spouting such bullshit when they go on about it. Um, but UKIP is probably the closest you're going to get to having some. Republican um, messages in there of independent, small government, things like that, you know. Um, but it was also infiltrated by quite a lot of people who wanted to give quite large tax breaks to large corporations and shit like that. So it was a, just like every every political party it had its nuances. It had its good and bad parts, you know. Um, yeah, so there you go. But it doesn't mean you're far right if you go with UKIP and that's a load of bullshit. But anyway... Damien, the guy who brought in the piece of paper with Roy's name on it, was one of the extreme hard left of the extreme hard left viewpoint and protested to the store manager that it was inappropriate for Roy to be coming in in the store when he was standing for a quote fucking racist party. Oh fuck's it, here we go. Here we go. Bear in mind, Roy never even mentioned his politics in the store, yet Damien would always be spouting off his views. And crucially, ju and critically judging other customers who didn't agree with him, he hardly bought anything, and had not com contributed to the store like Roy. The next weekend, Roy came into the store for his usual Sunday afternoon downtime with his sons, only to find the manager asking him to leave. He had caved into Damien and simply said to Roy, "Your politics are upsetting the other customers. Please leave." <sighs> oh, my blood's fucking boiling here. I'm just. <clears throat> See, this is when rules aren't abided by across the, you know, across the way. And I cannot stand hypocrisy because it only ever tends to flow in one direction. Unfortunately, um, as somebody like myself, who I'm not even a a centre right or I, I'm a centrist. I've always said that I take the best. I steal all of your ideas. So go fuck yourself, you know. Um, if the left have a, have a good idea, I'm stealing it. If the right have a good idea, I'm stealing it. Go fuck off, right? That's where I am. Um, 
And if I ever run for anything, and I never will, but if I ever did, that would be my those would be my politics. That, just so you know, um, I'd rather please no one and be truthful to myself than please everyone on one side and talk a load of bullshit. You know, um, but this fucking really annoys me because the, the, when I do see it a lot, the people who are catered to are not the people on the right. The pe people on the right, for the most part, if they have a problem with somebody else's politics, somebody says, okay, boomer, get the fuck on with it. No one cares. Right? And that's it. That's it. No one, no one says fuck all. And then you get things like this, where you have, shall we say, somebody complaining and kicking up a stink, and you know in the that the problem is the zeitgeist. You know if this person, Damien, complains to the right people, that store's getting shit on online by, you know... A lot of people on the left who don't like anything that doesn't agree with what they're what they're talking about, and it really sucks. It really, really, really sucks. I like political discourse. I like the fact that we're able to sit down and, especially in our Discord channels, most of the time anyway, we're able to sit down and and talk about politics and and go on about what we believe in and and, and not have it used against you. And you know, I I just had to close down a channel on the on the um, Discord because I couldn't trust people to not be fucking idiots, essentially. Because instead of taking the responsibility of for their own views and saying, look, you have that view, here is my view, let's talk, and if we don't if we don't agree at the end of this, that's fine. Instead of having that point of view, people bitch and moan and complain and rend their garments and cry, and they come crying to my mods of this person said this to me and it's not very nice and baby. and it's just like grow the fuck up this is why we can't have nice things this is why we can't have good political discourse because of people like that stop it right because damien is one of those people sorry he's one of those people if someone has said something to you that you don't agree with politically and your response is to go and tattletale on that person to somebody who's, who's in a position of authority you're a little bitch. And so is Damien. Nothing wrong with political discourse. How else are we going to learn? How else do you learn? Anyway. I'll get off my soapbox. I'll put my soapbox over here. There you go. It's over there now. <sighs> anyway. So Terry says. Roy began to protest and say he had never mentioned politics in the store and that it was unreasonable to ask him to leave for a political viewpoint. He's, and he's very right, by the way. He's extremely right. Extremely correct, right? Um, I would ask you to leave. There's two parts to that statement. If he had been coming in and handing out UKIP leaflets, get out. You shouldn't be in the store. That's completely fine. If he was asked to leave then, completely fine. But if he's never mentioned politics in the store, and he just has views... That's not a that's not a way you can't exclude somebody because of that. I'm sorry. Doesn't matter what views they are, right? If if they are a far right person, they will out themselves eventually anyway because the shit always rises to the top of the water, right? Don't worry about it. They will literally out themselves eventually anyway, right? Roy's done nothing wrong here. He's never mentioned politics in the store. He just has a as a viewpoint that not everybody agrees with outside of the store. Fine, but that has nothing to do with the store. He said he was standing as a candidate for UKIP in an area they had no hope of winning, as he agreed with their views, but he knew he wouldn't get, get elected. He had no interest in serving as a councillor. At this point, the manager very unprofessionally stated in front of all of the customers, Roy, your politics belong in the dark ages, and I don't want you in my store until the election is over. Wow, you have upset customers. Only one had a problem, by the way. That's in brackets. And I dread to think what will come of you after standing for that shit show. Wow. At, thi at this, with tears in his eyes, Roy proclaimed, I'm not coming back again. Don't bloody worry. Um, and I was pleased to say that several other customers also walked out at this time and the store began to deteriorate following a mini boycott. The manager himself left the company some weeks later and Roy returned to much fanfare when new leadership took over the store. I will never forget what he said when he came back. He said, I agree there should be no politics in a store, but that should apply to both sides. Yes. Exactly. I'm glad that had a happy ending. You know? I know I know a lot of these stories sometimes have a have a whiff of 
and everybody applauded sort of a thing. And so I, don't get me wrong, there are some of these stories where I'm like, mm, okay, but I'm reading them anyway because I'm not going to change the, the way that people write in. I'm not going to doctor anything because that's lying and it's wrong. Um, so I hope that's not one of these stories. But it does seem to me, at least we've got a happy ending there, and that's fine by me. You know, I'm just going to take that for what it is and say, right, okay. Um, because I, I assume this manager has left for other reasons apart from his political viewpoint, because that's not how Games Workshop operate. Um, Games Workshop would celebrate him doing something like that. I'm telling you now. So he's not left because of what he did to Roy. That's it. I'm telling you now. He's not left because of what he did to Roy. So, anyway... Moving on, here is a non-politic story, which I think is quite cool. We have Bolt, and Bolt is back again. He's back again, ladies and gents, to give us another story of Danish daring do. Here we go. Ghosts and Burgers, a Games Workshop retail story. <laughs> Just write your memoirs, dude. Stop writing them into me. Just write your memoirs. Hello again, Lord of the North and rest of the gang. This is a story from my days as a servitor designated CPH-02. <laughs> as I have told before, I ran an Age of Sigmar campaign uh, night every Thursday and loved every moment because of how, how it was from 5 to 10 p.m. and my manager was never there, so I had the run of the store. Games night was, as you can imagine, not very female-centric. But this was about to change. One Thursday night, a woman came in, and she was gorgeous. Taller than me, and I'm not a small guy. Blonde hair, and she was cut like a L'Oreal before her beetle fetish. <laughs> Alright. This, this woman would spend the next two, two Thursdays watching the games and talking to the guys and me, showing an interest in the game and the models. I ran an intro game with her in my own style, and had her painting a few models of mine. And can I just say, Bolt, if this was a dude, would you let him paint your own models? Uh, uh. The players would stare at her with open mouths, and I and I more than once had to strangle a laugh or two when they fell, uh, fell over themselves to explain the game to her. Note that I did strike down like Sigmar's hammer on creepy behaviour. I wouldn't have it in my store, and my ban hammer was, was, was always hung loose in my belt for, for stuff like that. My manager heard about her and told me not to waste my time on her with she will not spend any money in here or she is way out of your league anyway, why waste the time? Yeah, that, that, is, that, is, that is the most beta move that anyone will ever tell you, okay? Misery loves company and if somebody can't attract women, the first thing they want to do is to stop you from attracting women. That's it. That is it. You will know a chad when they're not getting laid and their only recourse when they go out and, and if they see that you're unhappy and you want a girlfriend is to help you get a girlfriend. That's a chad, my friend. Misery loves company, though. And that is such a beta thing to fucking say. It really is. He's out of your league anyway. Why are you even trying? Right? I hate that. I really... There's nothing a coward loves more than a brave man failing. Then it take that to the bank. Then it take that to the absolute bank. And I cannot stand guys like that. You know, guys who would... I used to have a friend, right? And if I struck out with a girl, if I approached a girl and I struck out, he would, like, laugh at me and celebrate it. Like, ha, ah, you know, like... And I, I'd say to him all the time, well, well, you're not doing... You know, you'd, would, you wouldn't have the balls to do something like that. So, you know, at least I'm not you. You know, like, shit like that. Because, you know... And a friend of mine uh, from from that from the pub I used to visit, he was a lot older than us, and that's where I got that that phrase from. He leaned over one night and just said, "Listen, mate, you know, you know what a coward loves most when a brave man fails. That's what a coward loves most." And I was just like, "That is exactly what I've been trying to say." You know, not being able to get my words out, but that is exact, exactly what I've been trying to say. Anyway, it's something that I've, I've stuck stuck with me for well ever since, really. I told him uh, I told him uh, to stuff it since I have a girlfriend anyway and I saw a potential new starter in her. She was just taking uh, a run up in the project. Okay. That's cool. A few days later she came in and asked to borrow the Night Horned Battle Battle Tome codex for all my codex for all my 40k friends 
and sat down at the table with a notepad and a calculator. After a while of her improving the ambiance in the store, she came up with a 2,000 points list and said, So Bolt, what boxes do I need to make this? I piled the boxes for a small fortune, and she then showed me an Instagram pic and said, And paints to make it look like this? I piled 20 pots of paint, and she just said, If I, if I pay now, and then... And, uh, if I pay now, then get it when you uh, when you close. And so, okay, no, 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 I need to read this because I know English isn't your first language. She said, if I pay now, can I then get it and you close and I can take you to dinner because you've been so helpful. I took her up on that and she swung her uh, card and walked off. She came back later and took me, me, and, me and my girlfriend to dinner and explained that she would be starting to play on Thursday when our new campaign starts. She did, and oh boy, did that start the simping. But believe me, that's a story for next week. Oh, and postscript, thanks to the community and the venting and adv advice channels, I really got my head back on track. That's great, dude. And it shows you how good the Discord server is for getting you out of a rut if you need it. Um, I bet you were all expecting that to be a date there, weren't you? I bet you were all expecting it to be, and then everybody clapped. We went back to mine, had sex, and everybody clapped. No, you had a girlfriend, and she got to go... And have a nice dinner with an, with another nice young lady, um, who then got into the into the hobby. Great story, Bolt. Thank you very much, my man. All right, I'm going to take a quick swig of water, and this is why I don't have an editor yet because all you'll be doing is editing out me drinking this water. I'm not paying you thirty quid a video for that, so there you go. Did YouTube put an ad there? Did they put an ad there? Sneaky bastards. Bet you they did. Anyway. Back to it. Although I have had some more reasonable offers, to be fair. So, yeah. I will be taking you up. If you give me a reasonable offer, I will take you up in it. Um, but I'm not made of money. You know? I don't make a lot of money from YouTube at all, really. So, you know. Um, you're cutting into my food budget and things like that if you want me to pay for you to, to do shit on the channel. But anyway, our last story is a doozy and I've kept this one for a while because I've I've just, I've been speaking to this guy, Dave, and he is he's not, he's not one of those Daves, um, but he is an absolute diamond of a guy and I want to run a role-playing campaign with him at some point because he seems like a very talented uh, dungeon master who has his own YouTube channel. I have asked if I can promote it. He said no, not yet because he, he's just got a few hundred people watching it. And it's just for him and his friends. But he wants to naturally naturally let it grow. But um, when, it, when it comes to it, I will be promoting him on the channel. So there we go. <clears throat> anyway, he says, Hi, Exile. Hello, David. I just wanted to go over an experience that I had at my friendly local game store, at which I am the assistant manager. We run Dungeons & Dragons nights in a little side room, which is awesome, as the atmosphere is in there is always great. We even have candles. <laughs> That's cool. Anyway, one night in there, we have a game running in a setting inspired by Wolfenstein. Basically, epic history in which World War II happens, but the Nazis get access to mechs and nukes, and all hell breaks loose. That's cool. That's cool. Wolfenstein, man. Love it. One of our players in there plays as a former SS soldier who switches sides and fights against the Nazis. Which I think is really cool from a redemption standpoint. Yeah. Um, so for you, for those of you who don't know, the SS were like the elite troops of the Nazi of the Third Reich, essentially. He continues. I am working outside the room, just making sure the Magic the Gathering games are going well. And then all of a sudden, I hear a bit of a commotion from the Dungeons and Dragons room. Of all the players in there, there are six. One has taken real offence to the SS Redemption guy's character. I look over and see it is Natalie, a girl who is polyamorous, blue-haired, an ultra-left person, not that that is necessarily makes you a bad person, in brackets, who proudly wears a social justice warrior t ju a so uh, sorry, a social justice warrior t-shirt declaring what she believes. Okay, again, this is up to you in your own store. Just because you wear shit like that doesn't mean she's a bad person. Her behaviour makes her a bad person. I refuse to judge people just on what they look like and how they behave, right? Sorry, on what they look like and, and you know, things like that. It's more um, how they behave that annoys me. Right. 
Also, this song on here right now is on um, Arbiter Ian's channel. I only figured that out the other day. Anyway, he says, David says, each to their own politically, I don't care. She says very loudly that all Nazis are beyond redemption and are not even human. They are only good to be killed and her character will spend the entire game trying to kill SS guy. Oh, God. SS guy says, quite calmly I might add, that he is gay and Jewish, but that some Nazi officers in World War II actually worked to get Jews away from the firing line, so to speak, and most were caught and also executed by their own regime. He knows this because his grandparents used to write letters to those officers' families after the war ended to thank them for their sacrifice in getting them out of there. As his own tribute, he made this character to play in the game. Right, for me, I would say that ends the argument. That ends the argument right there. Done. Argument over. Let's get on with the game. Like, there's no there's no comeback from that, if you know what I mean. Like, that's, that's it. Okay, job done. Fair enough. Natalie is not happy. She stands her ground and says she is going to never trust his character and that she will always try to kill him. At this point, the, the DM steps in, the dungeon master, steps in and asks SS Guy if his character has let anyone anyone know of his former allegiance. So basically, has he told anyone in the party who he used to work for? He says no, it's actually a secret. To which to which point the DM tells Natalie that she cannot metagame. She does not even know if SS Guy is a former Nazi or not. Fair enough. You'd think she'd let it go, right? Yep, I would definitely think at this point, that's it. She's had two two full-on chances now to let it go with Grace. Just let it go. You'd think she'd let it go now, right? Well, Natalie then asks what SS guy looks like. And shock horror, he is tall, well-built, with, with blonde hair and blue eyes. She says it is obvious, quote-unquote, what SS guy is and that she does not trust anybody who looks like him. In brackets, she misses the irony of how racist what she just said is, but there we go. <laughs> okay, it gets worse, guys. It gets worse. <clears throat> the game begins, and Natalie spends the entire game trying to engineer ways to get SS Guy killed, from leaving him behind in ambushes one week to actively throwing a grenade down a mining shaft when he is the last person to leave because she, quote-unquote, mistakes him for being a Nazi. The hilarious point of this story? In session three, Natalie is captured by the Third Reich's Gestapo for being an idiot in the town square of Lyon, France, trying to get people to loudly join the resistance. <sighs> Who leads the attack to get her out of harm's way? That's right, SS guy. <laughs> He fights with a group of NPCs, in brackets, the party is demolishing Nazi tanks in the area um, with the SAS, so they need to split the party to get Natalie out, and SS guy volunteered to go and, go and save her. Through the stiff Nazi resistance, losing most of his people and getting injured himself. Okay. When he gets to the bunker, he gets Natalie out. But she is screaming at him that she knew he was a Nazi all along. I am thinking at this point... This is going to be a great character development moment where she realises that actually he is there to save her. Actually, yeah, this is pretty cool. Yeah. Instead, when she is untied, uh, untied and handed a weapon, she puts it to SS Guy's head and asks him to beg for his life like the quote-unquote Nazi pig he is. SS Guy, reason, SS Guy reasons with her, tells her she is crazy and they need to get the fuck out of there right now. That is when the Dungeon Master turns up the heat. Stormtroopers are on their way and they need to leave. Natalie cocks the gun and says, Bye, pig, and pulls the trigger. She rolls a two on a d20 and the gun jams. She goes for a knife on the torture table, on the torture table next for her and SS Guy, finally giving up, rolls to shoot her and rolls a 19. Bang! Brains all over the wall. He takes one of the dead Nazi Nazis and puts them in a storage locker after stripping them. 
he puts the uniform on and says in German to the stormtroopers that the prisoner nearly got free, but he put her down, so not to worry. <laughs> he is congratulated after a few difficult rolls to convince them and given extra rations, ammo, and is even able to sneak a look at and to, to sneak a look at and steal some plans of the German advance on the way out. <laughs> fucking awesome. Every time I read that it, gives, it makes me chuckle. Nazi sat for the remainder of the session fuming and eventually, and eventually said she wanted to make another character for next week who was a female version of Brad Pitt from Inglorious Bastards. That Tarantino movie about getting revenge on Nazis. This was turned down by the, by the dungeon master as he, uh, as he felt she was only doing that in bad faith to go after SS guy again which Natalie didn't deny. He told her to either make a character not based in metagaming or don't play. She elected to make a new character and still tried to find ways to get SS Guy killed. She never succeeded though. Ironically, her constant making things harder for him made him level up a lot quicker than everybody else. He kind of became the main leader of the group. Thanks for the channel, dude. Love, Dave. All right, man. I'd love to know what happens to Natalie and SS Guy after this. because That just seems re <laughs> really funny. Um, but hey, don't act like this when you're playing role-playing games is all I can say. Um, because you sound, you act like a douche. And don't get me wrong, I have another story here, um, which which is uh, which will be done probably on Friday, which is which shows the opposite side of the coin. So we have somebody like who's a grim, dark, um, trench coat wearing, neck beard who who is into collecting Nazi memorabilia. Who turned out to be a bit of a douche when he's when he's playing tabletop role playing games. So don't you worry about that. We'll be exploring the next part of that on Friday. But uh, yeah, don't act like this. No matter what kind of political uh, standing you have, or or the or theories that you have, don't act like this. Don't be a douche. All right. That's all I've got to say to you. Anyway, that is the final um, story for the day. Sorry, my words going into my brain there. Uh, final story for the day. If you want to support the channel, then head over to Composite Games and give them some love. Make sure when you're getting your um, your models, you're getting them from Composite Games if you're in the UK or even in the EU, I think, because you get an extra 5% discount at checkout if you use the code Northern Exile down below. Not only do you support them, but you support me as well, because a certain amount of that 5% goes towards me getting some more Astral Blades and getting some prizes for the channel. We're having a rather big Patreon a members only um, competition in June in which you may win drum roll 30 pounds worth of models from composite games paid for by yours truly so if, if that's something that you want to get into then make sure that you become a member of the channel or you support me on patreon that way you will be entered into the draw and there aren't that many people in the draw and there are three prizes so Telling you now, if you want to get some free stuff or get some time on the channel, that's the best way to do it. That is it for today, guys. I love your long time, and please make sure you support Composite Games and you support me as much as you can because I love doing this for you and I can't wait to keep doing it in the near future. Anyway, love your long time. Have a really good one. I'll see you on Friday where we're going to end the week in style. See you then.